Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to work the organic chemistry questions from the 2016 paper. Chemistry Unit 2, the 2016 paper. So we will start with questions 1b. 1a is a definition for structural isomerism. Everybody should know that. So question B now. It says 60 cm cube of oxygen. So we have 60 cm cube of oxygen reacting with, or uh, we're mixed with 10 cm cube of uh, hydrocarbon X. So 60 cm cube of oxygen mixed with 10 cm cube of uh, hydrocarbon X in the form of CXHY. So after the reaction was completed, we got 40 cm cube of gas. All right? After they shaked it with, after they mixed it with the sodium hydroxide, 10 cm cube of oxygen gas remained. So the combustion equation now they gave us is this and us have to calculate the formula for hydrocarbon X. So the first thing we need to do is pick out all of the information present. So we have 60 cm cube of oxygen but after the reaction 10 cm cube of oxygen rib, rib was left back. So the 60 cm cube did not react. 10 from the 60 actually reacted. That leaves you with 50. And of the 40 cm cube of gas, if I take 10 from the 40, that leaves you with 30. So the CO2 would be 30. After the reaction, 40 cm cube of gas were left. And shaking with sodium hydroxide, 10 cm cube of oxygen remain. So of the 40 cm cube, 10 was for oxygen, that means that the 30 is CO2, alright? So let's do some calculations. Alright, so it is in the form of CXHY plus X X plus Y over 4 O2 and that will produce X CO2 plus Y over 2 H2O. Right? So we know that we have 10 cm cube of the hydrocarbon. So we reacted 10 cm cube of the hydrocarbon with 60 cm cube of the oxygen. But remember, 10 cm cube of the oxygen remained. So the amount of oxygen that was used is 50. So you start out with 60, 10 remain, so the final um, so the amount that reacted is 50 cm cube. For CO2, we know it is 30 because I already explained that after the reaction was completed, you add 40 cm cube of gas. But 10 cm cube of that was oxygen that means 30 is co2 
when you get a question like this, right? So we have 10, 50, and 30. You can do two things. You can divide each of them by this by the smallest volume. So 10, 50, 30. You can go ahead and divide it by 10. And that will give you the moles for each reaction pant. So that would be one, this would be five, and this would be three. Alternatively, we know that you can get the moles. So if you remember mole concept, if you want the moles, 10 cm cube, right? Would be 10, would be 24. Then I convert the 10 cm cube to dm cube. So it would be 0 0.001. Divide that by 24 dm cube. 0 0.005. 0 divided by 24. And 0 0.0. .0 Zero 03 divided by 24. Alright, so to calculate it, so it's 10 cm cube to dm cube. Um, that should be the point zero 01. So zero 0.01 zero divided by 24. That would give you 4.167 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So it's 0 0.01 dm cube divided by 24 dm cube. Remember, they told us in the question it was at RTP. This would be 0 0.05. With 0 0.00208, this one up and 0 0.03, zero 0.00125, right? And so we would go through and divide by the smallest number of moles, right? Which would be this. This should be to the minus four, not three. So this would give us the one. So you find zero zero two zero eight divided by zero. This would be was 4.99, that is 5. This would be was 2.99, so that is 3. So you can see, you get back the same thing, 1, 5, and 3. So if they give you the volume, so if it's a question like this one, in the same format, you can divide by the volume, the smallest volume of the three. In this case, it's 10. So it's one, five, and three. If you don't want to do this, you would find the moles. And we know that mole is the volume of gas divided by the volume of RTP, which is 24. So 10 cm cube to dm cube is 0, 0.0. 1. 
divided by 24, that's the answer. Find 0, 0,5 dm cube divided by 24, right? So these are all the moles. And then you would divide by the smallest one, and we get these, 1, 5, and 3. So that means we know what x is. So x x here is 3 because this is saying that one mole of propane reacted to give 3 moles of CO2 so the one mole of propane I'm giving away the answer this is saying that one mole of the hydrocarbon produces 3 moles of CO2 so the one mole of this hydrocarbon would have to have in three carbons it's one mole producing three co2 so this would have to have three carbons present so x is three we don't know what y is as yet but we know what x is so anywhere x is we can replace it now with three all right So we just need to find y. So how are we going to do that? All right. We know that we use five moles of oxygen, all right? Five moles of oxygen, and we produce three moles of CO2. So this is what you will have to do. All right, I'm going to erase this part now. So we know we have 5 moles of oxygen. In 5 moles of oxygen, so if we have 5 O2, then we have 10 oxygen atoms. In, in 3 moles of carbon dioxide, we have 6 oxygen atoms. Right? So if we start out with 10 oxygen atoms, balancing the equation, we should have 10 oxygen atoms on the product side. So we already have 6 in CO2. That means 10 from 6, we have 4 oxygen atoms remaining. So the 10 oxygen atoms are on our reactant side because we know we have 5 moles of oxygen. Now we have 6 oxygen atoms from 3 moles of CO2. That means in water, we must have four oxygen atoms, and each mole of water has one oxygen atom. So if we need four oxygen atoms, it means that we must have four moles of water, All right? But as you can see, it must be in the form of Y over two. If you have four moles of water, we would have 2 times 4, 8 atoms of hydrogen. So Y is 8. Because remember, Y is representing hydrogen. So if you have 4 moles of water, you have 8 hydrogens. So Y is 8. And that means Y again is 8. So just to recap, we have the three volumes, so we work out the moles, one, five, and three. The three is for CO2, right? One mole of the hydrocarbon produces three moles of CO2. That means any amount of carbon present here will have to come from one mole of the hydrocarbon. So, so we know that X is three. So we have C3 and 3 moles of CO2, right? We also know that we start out with 5 moles of oxygen and 5 moles is equal to 10 atoms of oxygen, right? 5 O2, 5 2s, 10. 
So if you have 10 oxygen atoms on the right hand side, you must have 10 oxygen atoms on the product side. And we already saw that we have 3 tools, 6. So 6 from 10 is 4. So we need 4 oxygens, therefore we need 4 water. When you have 4 water, 4 tools, 8 hydrogens. So it's 8 over 2. And we know that 8 over 2 is 4. So writing 8 over 2 is the same as writing 4 water. Now 8 over 4 is the same as 2. So we have 3 and 2, that's 5 or 2. So as was calculated, we have 5 or 2. 8 over 4, that's 2. 3 and 2 is 5. So we have 5 or 2. Right, so that's it. So the answers for the formula of hydrocarbon X, hydrocarbon X is C3H8. Right, they have also asked us in part two of the question to draw the hydrocarbon, to draw the displayed formula of it, which is pretty simple. Everybody should know that. So, part two of the question. Access us to draw the displayed formula for propane. So that would be propane. So that was the first part of the question. Now we are going to go to the second part of it. All right, in this question now, so for part C, it gave us the molecular formula C4H10O, C4H10O, all right? And it says there are four alcohols with the molecular formula C4H10O, right? And they drew these two structures for us already. And the question is, write the name and display formula for each of the two other alcohols. So this formula, it has four isomeric alcohols. They gave us two already, butan one al and butan two al. And they asked us for two more. So if you look at butan one al, right? So this would be one butanol, right? That would be two butanol. If you want the next isomer, remove a carbon from the end, that would leave you with three carbons. You cannot put back the carbons from the end. And if you watch the no, if you watch the other videos, or you just know already, you cannot put the carbon back at the end because you will be getting back the same compound. So you would have to put it in the middle. Mm. So the other alcohol would be propanol. So we have propan one al. And we are going to move it to the carbon two. So Sorry, not just propan one al. That is not correct. It would be so we have a methyl group on carbon two. So it is two methyl propan two al. Alright, so that's the first one. And then we are shifting the OH group to carbon 2. So we will get 2 methyl again. This is not propan 2 al, this is propan 1 al, it's on carbon 1. This one is 2 methyl. Propan 2 al. 
right? So those are the next two isomeric alcohols. Propan 2-methyl propan 2-al and 2-methyl propan 1-al. All right, so we're going to do the next question after that. All right, so for part B of question one, they gave us two pairs of alcohols and asked us for a test that would differentiate them and also the observation. So first, we need to decide if we have a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. So if you look at this compound, right? Look at this carbon. All right, so let's do it. So we have C, so CH3, CH, OH, CH3, right? The carbon with the OH group, it has one hydrogen, Therefore, it is secondary alcohol. If I want to do it in terms of carbon atoms, the carbon atom here with the OH group, it has two carbons attached to it. So if it has two carbons attached to it, it is a secondary alcohol. If you want to do it in terms of hydrogen, it has one hydrogen attached, so it is a secondary alcohol. So if it has two carbons attached, it's secondary or one hydrogen attached, it is secondary. So this one is a secondary alcohol, right? And for this one, it is CH3, CH2, CH2, OH. With this one now, if it has one carbon attached, it's primary are two hydrogens. So I always look at the carbon bearing the OH group. So this carbon with the OH it has one other carbon attached, so it is primary. This one had two attached, so it is secondary. In terms of hydrogen, if it has two hydrogen, it is primary. One hydrogen, secondary. Two hydrogens, primary. No hydrogens, it's tertiary. So what we need to do is find a test that can differentiate between secondary alcohols and primary alcohols. The test that you could use is the iodoform test. Remember the only alcohol for the iodoform test? For the iodoform test, you must have a methyl group, right? So it's so say it's a methyl ketone, a methyl ketone group, right? So you need a methyl group attached to the carbon with the double bond oxygen if it's a ketone. So when you have the second third alcohol here, clearly you can see that you have a CH3 group, right? Attached to the OH group. So this can be converted to the methyl ketone, right? And we know all the iodoform tests go already with the three hydrogens, not the three hydrogens, with the iodine atoms replacing the three hydrogens, right? So once you have a methyl alcohol or a methyl ketone for that matter, so when you say methyl alcohol, you have a CH3 group next to the carbon with the OH. Once you have that, it can do the iodoform test. If you look at this alcohol, it is C OH with an H, a H, and a CH2 group. There is no methyl group next to it. So the alcohol for the alcohol to do the iodoform test, it must have a methyl group next to the carbon in the OH group. Alright? So the test would be the iodoform test.
and for observation in the iodo form test we will get a yellow precipitate so for this compound which is our second dairy alcohol we would get a yellow precipitate but this is a primary alcohol so it would not do the iodo form reaction so we would get no precipitate all right so that is how we would differentiate these two alcohols all right for these two now again we need to check the type of alcohol present so this one again this is a secondary alcohol it's the same thing as this right but which one is this one? Let's draw the structure. CH3, C, then it says CH3, OH, CH3. Alright? So clearly, we don't have any hydrogen atoms attached to the carbon with the OH group. Alright? So this is the carbon with the OH group. We don't have any hydrogen attached to it. If we don't have any hydrogen, it's a tertiary alcohol. If you're doing it in terms of carbons, we have three carbon atoms attached. When you have three carbon atoms attached, it is a tertiary alcohol. So we have a tertiary alcohol and a secondary alcohol. So this test is also pretty straightforward. You could use potassium dichromate or potassium per per manganate, whichever you prefer. So if you use potassium dichromate, K2Cr2O7 slash H plus potassium dichromate solution, and at the test you could just put oxidation, right? So we know that the second tertiary alcohol will be oxidized, but the tertiary alcohol will not. So once this is oxidized, the K2 Cr2 this solution it will change from orange to green so the secondary alcohol the dichromate solution it will change from orange to green but for the tertiary alcohol the solution will remain orange so the observation or don't put will change yeah, you can have will change. The observation, K2 solution, and take out the wheel. Alright, so potassium dichromate solution changes from orange to green. And in this one, this solution remains orange. So in this one, it oxidizes the alcohol so it is reduced from the plus six state so in dichromate the chromium is in the plus six state when it is reduced it forms cr3 plus which is green so the green color is because of the cr3 plus ion all right the tertiary alcohol is not oxidized so the potassium per month dichromate is not reduced so the orange color Stays right, so that for the iodoform test, yellow precipitate form, so, yellow precipitate form, no precipitate form. All right, so that would be an observation. And these would be your test. Alright. So that's it for this question. 
I will work question four, which is the next organic question in the next video. So this is it for this one. If you have any question, you can ask. And if you want to be notified when I upload the next video, you can subscribe and click the notification bell. So that's it for this video.